Welcome to The Published Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. And today we are here to talk about the newest saint of our holy Catholic Church. Mm. At least the newest canonized one. Yes. 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 Well, you know, we unfortunately we are only really able to keep track of the canonized one. Well, an important distinction. The church doesn't make anyone a saint. The church simply recognizes that someone is a saint by virtue of being in heaven. As I said, keep track. Exactly. We can only keep track of the ones that have been canonized because those are the ones that, you know... Yes. Yeah, because we have, we have, we have been given reason to believe. We have the confirming miracles. Are in heaven. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, someone needs to say their name because they're not Welsh, so other people could pronounce it correctly. Saint Maria Antonia de Paz y Figueroa. That, that works, yeah. A.K.A. A.K.A. Also known as Maria Antonia of Saint Joseph. That was her uh, religious name, as I believe she was a sister. Mm-hmm. And also known as Mama Antula. Okay. That is a name. She was born well, in... Maria Antonia. The rest is details. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was born in 1730 in Silapica, Santiago del Estero, which was in the vice royalty of De Rio de la Plata. Which is currently now in Argentina. At least yep. that part is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she died March 7th in 1799, which would put her at the age of 69, uh, in Buenos Aires, which was at then at that time that's, in the... That's just a Spanish version of vice royalty. Yes, the, the Virgenato uh, del Rio de la Plata. Yes, but for some reason, they, they, they put one for, for mm-hmm. a born, one in, mm-hmm. you know... Mm-hmm. Uh, beatified August 27th in uh, the year of our Lord 2016 in Santiago del Estero, Argentine by Cardinal Angelo Amato. And that's a really nice trend of uh, both beatifying and canonizing people in the place where they lived instead of doing all of it in Rome. Because it's nice you know, to do it in Rome for the Universal Church, but... More people who probably have devotion to this saint can do it if they're canonized where they lived and ministered. Yes, that is where that oh, is oh, where oh. most likely where their community is from. Although they were canonized at St. Peter's Basilica mm-hmm. on February 11th of this year. And now that I think about it, the rules might be that you can be beatified locally, but all canonizations still occur in Rome. That seems reasonable. Yes, plus I imagine that, that, that Pope Francis wanted to do it. Because uh, she's, she's Argentine. She's Argentine. <laughs> He's Argentine. So, we missed it this year, but her feast is celebrated on March 7th, except that's almost always in Lent, so her commemoration is on (laughs) March 7th. She's the patron of the Daughters of the Divine Sister, or Savior, sorry, the the Daughters of the Divine (laughs) Savior. (laughs) Of which she was the foundress. Yep. Uh, She's also the patron of female entrepreneurs, and is the first female saint of Argentina. Nice. Argentina. Argentina. Oh. All right. Anyway, um, we know she was born into a wealthy family. Mm-hmm. Um, her family seemed to be a, of mostly the, the Spanish descent of Argentina because they were talking about how there's various you know nobles in their background. Mm-hmm. Well, especially this is the 1730s. Yeah. Before ma- large other European immigration into Argentina. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, she she probably was not a you know Native American. Sure. <laughs> Well, there's just there's, there's less of that in Argentina than we're used to, say, in Brazil or Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, at age 15, she wanted to become a nun. However, there were no active religious orders in her area. What am I going to do? So she started dressing up in a, back, in a black robe, and she lived with other like-minded women who, you know, also would like to be a nun, but, you know, didn't have any orders for them. The, thus the patron to female entrepreneurship. <laughs> she took initiative. I mm-hmm. like it. Also, apparently, it mentioned there's a one-off that I didn't even put in here that, like, she... she did needlework and stuff for mm-hmm. money, but you know, yeah, that was common yeah. at the time. Yeah, um, yeah you know, it, it, in it, in the in the seventeen hundreds, women had limited career options. Needlework was one of them, mm-hmm. and she also helped with the religious education of the child of children in the area and cared for the sick and the poor. A good thing for all of us to do. After King Charles the Third expelled the Jesuits from the Spanish Empire, she traveled by foot, organizing retreats and promoting Ignatian spirituality. So it was a big political to-do back in the day. The Jesuits were exiled from most places, but doesn't mean that the good work couldn't continue by others who weren't Jesuits. Because mm-hmm. they were clearly up to something. <laughs> They're always up to something. 
That's why. That's why. That's why I picked that one. <laughs> Doesn't mean they deserve to be suppressed. Yes, but anyway, um, she expanded the area that she did retreats as they were going well, and mm-hmm. eventually she mm-hmm. traveled all the way to Bonus Aries in the hopes that she could talk the officials into restoring the Ignatian tradition. Mm-hmm. That did not happen. Ah. Uh, but she did get on the good side of the Archbishop. Always a good thing. Who um, supported her in her work, which helped it become known outside of Argentina. Like, I heard some things, like she was corresponding with people in France. They were writing her um, <clears throat> letters and stuff she wrote mm-hmm. in English and German and other languages. Like, she was known outside of her area in her life, even, for promoting you know, the retreats and other things. Nice. <laughs> Well, it should be noted, I mean, there are people, there are lots of uh, Ignatian retreats, mm-hmm. you know, many of them not organized or having anything else to do with the Jesuits, because we can all learn from the example of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Yes, and I imagine, given the wide range of the retreats that you can have, she did ones that were probably more helpful for the average person, because, mm-hmm. like, the average person isn't going to be able to take a 30-day silent retreat. Seriously, the average person <laughs> can't take an 8-day silent retreat. Yeah. 30 days? Mm-hmm. Of silence? Mm-hmm. Well, there's 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 times of talking, but like it's it's mostly silence. Yeah, you're you're, you're mm-hmm. not you're not like full Cistercian, but mm-hmm. you don't have to invent your own sign language to you know get people to pass the salt <laughs> at the table. But you know, it's here's reading, here's prayer, here's you know time of the chapel. There 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 might be some time where you discuss what you've read and you know, came up in prayer, and then there's more quiet reading. <laughs> But you're not going to discuss the latest sports ball games. You'll be pretty isolated from the world. I don't know. Please give the salt <laughs> to me. <laughs> All right, so Nate's going off to the I monastery. Might, I might occasionally end up with the pepper, but... <laughs> <laughs> then you just throw it back at them. <laughs> Eventually they'll understand you're calling them stupid. <laughs> not the pepper, the salt. <laughs> All right, and then, <laughs> as we already learned about from the beginning, she eventually did establish a, a religious order of the Daughters of the Divine Savior. <laughs> and this is this is a common theme in the stories of saints. They feel a call to religious life, but there's nothing they can join in their area or nothing that suits their spiritual needs. So sometimes you just have to found the thing yourself. Yes, as, you know, even if they're ones in the area, given mm-hmm. how she was all into Ignatian spirituality mm-hmm. and... Excluding that one woman that, like, personally knew St. Ignatius, there really weren't women. <laughs> yeah, they, they still don't have a, you know, a second order of the Jesuits. Yeah. There are no Jesuit women. So, you know, I, I didn't get too much into it, but I imagine that it has a lot of, you know, similar hallmarks of spirituality as them yeah. in her order. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and especially, like, the, the reflection on the two standards. You know, the ancient... Christian and before that the ancient Jewish tradition of there's only two ways. You have the way of life and the way of death. You can be loyal to the Lord or you can be loyal to Satan. You know, there's, there's, neutrality is not really an option. No, I really want to know the history of who invented computer languages because they're all binary. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The code for what is good, 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 evil, good, good. <laughs> Well, no, well, but binary st- does make a good deal of sense because some argue, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with this, but there is a school of theology that says evil isn't a thing, it's just a privation of the good. So it's not the one, it's the zero. Anyway, so we, 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 we now have learned about the, the newest saint. Mm-hmm. Santa Maria Antonia. So uh, comment below with interesting saints that you would like us to talk about. Maybe someone with a Welsh name. It's been a long time since we had to say a Welsh name. <laughs> or perhaps you have a saint you we wouldn't want to talk to about, but you would like us to talk about. So, you know, you can put them down there, too. Maybe mm-hmm. one of those Welsh saints where it's all that we know about them is they're from this one small Welsh town. <laughs> we know this Nothing person existed. Nothing else is known about them. This person lived. But we're lived. pretty sure. <laughs> they lived. They died. And they're from a place we can't pronounce. We presume. We presume Why all these things. Why are two things, L's a Y? I don't know. <laughs> we presume, as they are likely human, that all these things happened in a time and at a place. <laughs> the guy from the place with a thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tale as old as time. All right. Until next time. Until so, next time. Also remember to give this episode a like and subscribe to our channel. Yep. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love.